friends, it's Lexa, and as you can see, my shelves are sparse, and that's because today we have a book haul. And I also filmed an unhaul. Then I'll be able to organize my shelves, and then I'll be able to do a book tour. We are just on a roll. It's 4 p.m., I haven't eaten, and I'm hungry! Where's my biscotti? Biscotti is sticking to my lip gloss. I figure, let's just start off swinging and go with my pretty books that I've gotten recently in Fairy Loot, Illumicrate, such as those boxes. The first one was the most recent one, which, oh, and I have to hold that very strategically. The Lies We Sing to the Sea. Her Lies of Peace to God, His Life to Save a Kingdom, Her Lies to Destroy Them All. I mean, come on. Why do all books not have this? This is stunning. I do not know what this is about. That will be a theme throughout this. If you know, you know, okay? If you've been here, you already know this. If not, hi, welcome. I don't tend to read the synopses of books. If I do, I read like the first couple of sentences because I like to just go in on vibes. I feel like most synopses give the book away, okay? So this came in my most recent Illumicrate box. Absolutely gorgeous, except it's a weird size. Why are not all hardbacks the same size and then we have like a trade paperback and then a mass market paperback? Why are they like a little bit off? That's why I love the book of the month books because they look really pretty on the shelf because they're all the same size. Please, please, I'm begging you. <sighs> I don't know if this was an Illumicrate or a Fairy Loop. A Song of Silver Flame Like Night. I mean, come on. What? 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 Who needs to know what a book is about when it looks this beautiful? In a fallen kingdom, one girl carries the key to discovering the secrets of her nation's past and unleashing the demons that sleep at its heart. We've got dragons. Absolutely count me in because let me tell you, the prior of the orange tree did me dirty. There were not enough dragons. So hopefully we get what is promised here. Well, I don't even know if they're promising dragons. I'm just basing that off of the fact that there is a singular dragon on this cover. The longer you look, just the more beautiful it gets. Artists are absolutely incredible. Shout out to you, I could never. The height of my art career was back in like fifth grade when that S symbol was like super cool. This next one, just prepare yourselves for a second. Everyone has been talking about this book and I wanna read it. The Adventures of Amina al Sarafi, I believe. But this is the only copy I have of this book and like, what am I supposed to do, read this? This copy? I'm afraid to touch it, oh my. God. I promise I'll talk more about the books when it's not just like these incredibly gorgeous copies, but like how could you not just focus on that? A pirate of infamy and one of the most storied and scandalous captains to ever sail the seven seas. She survived backstabbing rogues, vengeful merchant princes, several husbands, and one actual demon? Absolutely say no more. I'm gonna have to get like an ebook copy of that because wow. Okay, I believe that that is it for my pretty, super extra pretty copies, but we've still got some absolutely gorgeous regular editions in here. So hang on tight. First book that I picked up randomly at Barnes & Noble, it brought me back to the original days. I don't know if any of you were readers when you were younger. I was an avid reader as a teenager. Then I was forced to read a lot in high school and college, fell out of the love of it, just got back into reading last year. But I remember that I used to go to Barnes & Noble and spend hours just sitting in the like, they only had one little half of a section of a YA. And I would sit and just look at the covers and read synopses and have piles of books. And then I would have to narrow it down to like one book. because I was allowed to buy like one book that I could read. And it was the best time ever. I didn't have Goodreads. I didn't know what people's thoughts on them going in. Other than like the big, really super hyped series like Twilight, I hadn't really, like I didn't learn about books through recommendations. It was just through finding them at the bookstore. So that's what I did this time. And I found this and my battery's about to die. I'll be right back. Sorry, what was I saying before we were rudely interrupted? The Mermaid, the Witch, and the Sea. I think that this has pirates, witches, and the sea. Hear me out, hear me out. Sapphic pirates. Or queer pirates? I don't know. Queer, queer of some kind pirates, come on, come on. Speaking of going into Barnes and Noble with no plan, just randomly buying a book, I finally, after two months, I keep mentioning this in videos, but I will keep mentioning it because, oh, uh, excuse me, no thank you. It is my saving grace. I finally have a hold of at least a month's worth of medication. I have not been able to get a hold of my ADHD medication in over two months. It's been quite the disaster. I have cried almost every single day. I finally have some, at least until next month, in which case that is future Lex's thing to figure out. After what was uh, one hell of a day trying to get it, I decided to quickly treat myself, go to Barnes & Noble, shop around, get a chai, get a book, and I got Trust of the Emerald Sea. I was going back and forth between whether I wanted to get this on ebook or get the hard copy of this because I didn't know about the Kickstarter in time to sign up for the Kickstarter. And when I just, really what sold me on this, hello? 
that is gorgeous. Brandon Sanderson is one of my favorite authors of all time, so I figured even though I prefer to read on an e-reader, in some ways, I prefer reading on an e-reader over reading a hardback, but I prefer reading a floppy paperback to reading on an e-reader. But I figured I'd want a copy of this on my shelf. I started reading it and I was just loving it so much. It is so whimsical. This follows Tress of the Emerald Sea. She collects cups. She lives on a rock. She's not supposed to leave the rock. My guess is that she does leave the rock. I, that's all I know. On that same trip that I got The Mermaid, The Witch, and the Sea, I also got The Road of the Lost by Nafisa Azad. Nafisa Azad wrote, can you see it? Hello, The Wild Ones. One of my favorite books of all time, completely underrated. Please read it. Support this author. I love her so much. I don't know her, but I love her. One moment, please. Hi, Mama. What are you doing? Sorry, my mom called. I was trying to get her help because I just set up my new record player and I think it's broken. How to Sell a Haunted House by Grady Hendrix. I'm gonna be honest with you. I bought this because for some reason in my mind, I thought it was a literally dead book club pick. It's not. I don't think it was ever considered to be. I don't know why I thought that. So as soon as it, like I pre-ordered it and I still haven't read it yet. I believe that this follows a brother and a sister, their parent or someone in their family dies from COVID and then they have to sell their house but the house is haunted, hence the name. I've heard mixed reviews about this. I don't think I've ever read a Grady Hendrix book, so we'll see how I feel about that. You're a dusty one. How did you get so dusty? All of my books were sitting on the floor for a little while before I got my bookshelf, so I don't know why I'm asking myself that question. That's why. Slewfoot by Brom. Wow. Stunning. This is a horror book that also has just like absolutely beautiful artwork in it. Gorgeous. And we're following Slewfoot, who I believe is a demon or meets a demon. And this, the, um, little synopsis of this is pitching this is like a scary horror but for some reason I thought that it was like a cozier horror. Hmm interesting but it is about Slewfoot and then maybe like another kind of monster evil thing and I've just heard absolutely incredible things about it and I found it on sale. It was like six dollars and normally you can't get this for like under 20 so absolutely I bought it. Duh. I love N.K. Jemisin's fantasy novels and series. We will talk about some more in a sec because yes I did buy more. The Fifth Season is my all-time favorite books this year. Probably going to end up having to be on my all-time favorite books ever list. This is a short story collection. Tricky part with me, short stories are hit and miss. It's not so much that I don't like them. It's that I already struggle to complete books. Back before I did like book two, where I was like really, really into reading, when I was into reading in high school, I would perpetually not finish books, but I'm not talking like, oh, I'd pick it down, I'd read a little bit and then knock it back. I would have like 20 pages left and not finish it because I'd move on to something else. So it's already hard enough for me to stick through the end. Short story collections, it's tricky for me because once you're done with the short story, you could easily put the book down and then never think about it again. Dory, Dory, that is also not a scratching post. You have multiples in this room. Could you use any of them rather than the furniture? I already tried picking up a few of these. I just don't think it was the right time. I need to be in a certain mood for short story collections, but N.K. Jemisin is just absolutely incredible. So I'm sure that this will be. Oh my God, I was telling you about Road of the Lost by Nafisa Azad. I just completely stopped telling you about this. I don't know a lot about it other than the fact that I plan on reading anything that Nafisa Azad writes. Absolutely stunning. And I believe that this is a YA fantasy book about the Fae. I can't believe I completely forgot to keep telling you about that. Anyway, I went to Books A Million. I love Books A Million specifically because of their clearance sale section. Why Barnes & Noble has such a shit sale section pisses me off. I found three incredible finds. Find number one, The Year of the Witching by Alexis Henderson. I loved The House of Hunger, also featured somewhere up here. This is my favorite shelf. And I've heard absolutely nothing but incredible things about this. Yes, it still has the price tag on it. I'm gonna have to take the time to get it off at some point. But you can see I got a good deal on it, so there's that. This is fantasy, it's witchy, need I say anymore? No. Tinfoil Butterfly. First off, this cover, it's hard to catch because it is literally like tinfoil. All I know is that this is a weird horror novella. I believe Allie from Hardback Order and Kayla from Books and Lala both love this. Don't quote me on that. Do not quote me on that. But for $5, with their recommendation, why would I not give it a try? Then finally, the height of my Books A Million fine. Ninth House by Lee Bardugo. For, count it, $7.97. This was right when Hellbent came out and therefore I couldn't find a single hardback copy of Ninth House. I didn't even, I, I don't own hell then. But everyone talking about it made me want to buy Ninth House. I figured if I was going to buy Ninth House, I should buy the hardback version so I could buy Hellbent, which I still haven't bought, so I probably could have just bought the paperback, but we're not going to think too hard about that because either way, when I could not even find this, and if I could, it was like more than the actual purchase price, I found it for $8 at BAM. This follows our main girl, Alex Stern. Her real name is Galaxy. We will not comment on that. She goes to Yale, joins a secret society at Yale. Maybe there's demons. 
ghosts? Something. But I love Leigh Bardugo. Well, mm, here's the thing. Leigh Bardugo and I, Six of Crows, absolutely all-time favorite. Shadow and Bone, I never even finished the trilogy, to be perfectly honest with you. I made my way kind of through the second one by just very reluctantly listening to it on the audiobook, and I was done. So we'll see how I do with this. Some thrift store finds my favorite. This one was such a good find because I tell you the day before I went to the thrift store and I found this, I almost bought this full price. On Earth We're Briefly Gorgeous by Ocean Duong. Come on. This I have started reading. I read like the first, I have a receipt. I'm trying to get better about saving receipts for tax purposes. Maybe this year will be the year. This is about a man who is writing, this book is like a letter to his mom who doesn't speak English. So he knows that she'll never read it. Just detailing what it was like as um, a first generation immigrant, the life that like it, him and his mom's relationship, what she went through, what he went through. I've heard that it is just absolutely a sob fest packed into a little book. And really that's all you needed to tell me. Plus it was $3. Then I found this Savage Song by V.E. Schwab. But I believe in Ka Katie said in one of her videos that V.E. Schwab now only goes by V.E. Schwab. That's how I'm gonna refer to them until I know otherwise. Is this part of a duology or a trilogy? Not sure, not sure. But people talk about V.E. Schwab so much and how much they love the writing. And I've read Vicious and it was good. I really wanna read The Invisible Life of Adia LaRue. I feel like that's gonna be my shit. And for a dollar, of course I picked this up. August Flynn wants to be human. Kate Harker wants to be ruthless. Their souls are in danger. There's no such thing as safe in a city full of monsters. This one I was so excited about. I already read it, so I can tell you what it's about and that I absolutely loved it because it is no other than Olivia Blake, one for my enemy. This is a um, Romeo and Juliet retelling. Even when I've read the book, I still struggle to tell you what it's about. Seems on brand. I gave this four stars, but Olivia Blake is like an all-time favorite author. Look at this. This is Romeo and Juliet, but turned New York modern day witches. And we've got the patriarchal family, versus the matriarchal family, battling for their territory in New York City in some secret, what's the word for it? Not disastrous. Well, forbidden love. Now it's traditionally published. I found this at Barnes & Noble like two weeks before the traditional published date was even, had, had come. So I bought it and read it because why would I wait for reading a book for my favorite author? This I have heard Kayla talk about under the guise of weird horror that she wouldn't necessarily recommend, which means that it could very much work for me or it could very much not, but either way, I'm excited to try it out. And that is, this is very water damaged. Oh, this is like stuck together water damage. I bought this secondhand online, but I bought it in like new condition. Is that like new condition? Excuse me. Someone definitely spilled water on this book. That's fine. I have a couple books like that. No judgment here. The Need by Helen Phillips. We got a girl, maybe suffering of sleep deprivation, hearing footsteps in the living room. Kayla recommended it as a weird horror book, so of course I picked it up. I that's it. I, I can try to pretend and make up other reasons, but that's really the only reason. Then I got Riot Baby. This was the group read for Blackathon. I ended up, I am like halfway through this. I have to take a pause on it and I want to go back and just like, it's so short that I just want to reread the whole thing because I feel like this will be a perfect book to read in like one sitting and take time to really reflect on because this just already from what I was reading had so many amazing themes in it. This is a dystopian novella, but it's so much more than that. And we're following Ella who has a thing. And her thing is that in certain specific interesting ways she can see the future and about her brother and her brother's attempts to protect her and their relationship with their mom and really just a story about the black experience in the United States. Leave the world behind. Oh my God, five stars. I absolutely love this. I read it. I thought that I would not like it. I read the library edition and then immediately went online and bought myself a copy because I wanted one for myself because I loved it so much. This is uh, an apocalypse book, but it's it's an, it's not about the apocalypse. It's about one family who maybe might be going through the apocalypse, but mm, are they? They go off to an Airbnb, family vacay, having the time of their lives. Not really. But then the uh, they hear a knock on the door. Knock, knock, knock. It's the owners of the Airbnb. They're like, hi, hello. Uh, we don't mean to disturb you, but it seems to be that there is a huge blackout. We can't get back to our home and we would like to stay here. Thank you very much. We have the family who's staying at the Airbnb, they're white. The family who owns the Airbnb, they're black. And there's a lot of conversations about race, racism, our assumptions about people. And it's really more about these two families and each person in the family and how they're existing with like a little bit of maybe the apocalypse going on somewhere else. I don't know who I would recommend this to, but I loved it. Getting into my book of the month books. This is a book of the month book, but I didn't buy it from book of the month, I bought it used. But these are ones I actually got from Book of the Month. First one, River Sing Me Home by Eleanor Sharir. 
First off, this cover? A redemptive story about a mother's gripping journey across the Caribbean to find her stolen children in the aftermath of slavery. I think that's all I heard about it before I said yes, absolutely, please get me this book. Most of the time from Book of the Month I get horror or fantasy or thriller books, but I couldn't pass up on this one. Then I got Lone Woman by Victor Lavelle. I think that this, if I'm remembering correctly, is a horror. Our main character Adelaide carries around this very large trunk that she keeps locked because apparently anytime that she opens it, people around her go missing or disappear, both, and. Especially with horror, I like to go in knowing the least amount of pos as possible. I think I'm kind of changing my views on synopsis when it comes to adult fantasy, like high fantasy. I found I can enjoy it more if I've read the synopsis and I kind of know where the story is going. It helps me get my footing in. But still, when it comes especially to like mystery thrillers, horror books, anything like that, I always feel like the synopsis just gives too much away. The less I know, the better. And finally, the last book that I've got recently, there is no defined timeline for this. This I just defined as anything I've gotten since my last haul, which I believe I posted in like January. It was one of the first videos I posted. The London Seance Society. This is by the same author as The Lost Apothecary. Have I read The Lost Apothecary? No. Did I buy this because it's from the author of The Lost Apothecary? Yes. I don't know, okay? I don't claim to make sense. Wow, this matches the couch frame. This would have matched the shirt I was wearing earlier too. But we've got two women conjuring the dead. Pretty Girls by Karen Slaughter. I have heard that this is just a brutal thriller book. I haven't read, like I've read some brutal or more, brutaler, more brutal, pretty brutal horror books, but s mm, some of them that are just like, I feel like they're just shock value for shock value's sake. I tend to stay away from those aren't enjoyable for me. So we'll see where this falls. I feel like this will be like, this is the one I always see people recommending. And then maybe I'll know what my threshold is for how much thrillers and horror books can go there. Then I got Akata Witch by Nadia Korafor. First, stunning. I heard Jesse on YouTube talking about this during Blackathon. I had never heard of this. This is a middle grade fantasy series, I believe. Our main character has hidden, secret, unlocked, maybe magical powers. Born, okay, yes, she was born in New York City, but lives in Nigeria. And I believe that we've got like a magical school or magical students learning their abilities. And I've heard nothing but incredible things about that series. The camera probably moved. I tried to delete things without moving the camera, but it wasn't working. The next two are series. The first one is by N.K. Jemisin, and we have The Killing Moon duology. The Killing Moon, The Shadowed Sun, Correct? Yes. It bothers me a little bit that this one, I don't know if you can tell, it's like textured and this one is not, but it's fine. I'm gonna be honest with you, I don't know what this is about. I literally just bought this after I finished the fifth season trilogy and I decided that I would make it my life's mission to read all of N.K. Jemisin's fantasy series, which brings me to the last three books that we have, The Inheritance Trilogy. Don't look too closely. Yes, the middle one is um, a different version of this. And for some reason I bought the first and the third and I didn't buy the second and then I bought the second second hand and then it wasn't the same edition. But I'm learning to be okay with that. Again, do I know what this is about? No, but I kind of don't want to know. I didn't know what the fifth season was really about going into it and it was just absolutely incredible and blew my mind. So you could buy this all like bound up into one. The Inheritance Trilogy you can buy just as like one, which was originally what I was going to do. But luckily I ended up seeing it in person. I think Barnes and Noble had it. And I knew that there was no way I was going to physically read it that way because it was so thick. I mean, it, it's the size of like basically these three books, but into one book. I already like that's why I prefer to read a lot of times on the e-reader is because I have arthritis and my wrists end up hurting. So I knew that if I bought that, I wasn't going to actually read it physically. These separately, I will read physically. Let's count, how many was that? You'll already know, because I have a counter, but I need to know. 29? Oh my God, I lied, I have one more. Not one more book, but I have one more series. I bought this entire series. I plan on reading this entire series, possibly for a vlog. My plan is, I have two different video ideas in mind, depending on how this first book goes. So I'm either going to do it as a vlog, reading the whole thing, or something else. Oh, this is A Court of Thorns and Roses by Sarah J Maas. I don't know how I'm gonna feel about it. I had very mixed feelings about the Throne of Glass series. Loved some of them. Literally didn't even read the last book because Tower of Dawn did me so dirty that I got burnt out with the series. But now we can officially say, we can bump it up. How many is that? 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34. 34 books in this book haul. Let me know down in the comments below if you've read any of them, if you recommend them, if I need to bump any of them up on my TBR, if you've read any of them and I need to bump them down my TBR. If you made it all the way to the end of this video, leave a little fairy emoji down in the comments below. I know fae aren't fairies, okay, but that's always what I think of. When I first heard fae, I thought that they were fairies. Is there a fairy emoji? Hope so. 
Hope so. If you enjoyed this video, consider hitting that subscribe button, pushing that thumbs up button. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye!